Today we're going to be talking about identifying functions. The biggest rule to remember for functions is that every value of x has one and only one corresponding value of y. So here I want you to write each value of x Each value of x has one and only one corresponding y value. So what this means is when you place the x value into an equation, you're going to get a predictable and consistent y value, um, as when we're talking about y equals mx plus b. So when we talk about y equals mx plus b, When you plug in here for this x value, you should only receive one y answer when you plug in the x with your slope and your y-intercept. If you have the possibility of getting two separate y answers, then it is not a function. So the easiest way that we can do this is we look at our y values. So let's start by looking at a set of ordered pairs. We're going to look at our y values. We're going to compare them to our x values. We are going to start by highlighting or circling all of the x values in our set. So what you can see here in this set is that we have one x value of 5, one x value of negative two, one x value of zero, and one x value of one. Based on the information they gave us, each x value is only listed one time. And because each value of x is only listed one time, we can assume that when you plug in each of these x values, these are their corresponding y values. So because each of these x values is different and they and each x value only has one y corresponding value, this is a function. So now let's look at this second example. Again, we're going to come through, we're gonna highlight our x values. Now, when we look through these x values, we have an x value of 4, we have an x value of 1, we have an x value of 2, and we have another x value of 1. We're going to quickly check to see the y values of each of these. In this case here, when you enter a 1 into this y equals mx plus b, you'll get the value of 5. In this case here, if you enter the value of 1 into y equals mx plus b, you could also get negative 2. Because when you enter 1 into your equation of y equals mx plus b, you have the possibility of receiving two separate answers. This is not a function. So and again, the reason this is not a function is because to be a function, each value of x has to have one and only one corresponding y value. It's easiest to think about this as a soda machine. If you go to the soda machine and you put in your money and you press the button for Coke and you get a water, that machine is not functioning. It's not a function. If you push Coke and you get a Coke, it is a, fu a functioning machine, so it is a function. If when you push a button, the four, you get what you expect, the three, every single time without fail, it is a function. The issue here is that when you push the one in this case, you're either going to get a Coke or you're going to get a water bottle. 
And when you go and you push that one, you want to make sure that you're getting the same thing every time. You want to make sure that what you're spending your money on, you're getting in return. So a quick way to do this is to look at our X values and see if any of those X values repeat. And if we do have repeating X values, check to see if the Y value on those is the same or different. So again, we're going to highlight our X values on the table. We have an X value of one, an X value of two, and an X value of negative two. Are two and negative two the same number? If I owed you $2, would you be happy with me saying, no, no, you have to give me $2? Probably not. Two and negative two are not the same value. They are opposite. It's the difference between having $2 in your checking account and owing $2 to the bank because you overdrew your account. Now, you will notice over here that these two X values have the same Y value. Nowhere in this rule does it say anything about how many Y values can be the same. Nowhere here does it say that every Y value has to be different. So that's to say every single X value could have the exact same Y value so long as each X value only has one Y value. So in this case, because we have one X value of one, one X value of two, and one X value of negative two, this table represents a function. Let's look at this second table. Remember when you're looking at a table and it's horizontal, X is always your top row of values. So we're going to look at our X values. We have an X value of negative one, an X value of negative two, and a second X value of negative two. Before we immediately say, oh, not a function, because we have two of the same X values, we need to double check that we're gonna get two different results. So on this column, if we plug in negative two into the equation, we'll get a three as our Y value. In this column, if we plug in negative two for our X value, we're going to get four. Because when you plug these two values into the equation, your resulting answer is going to be a Coke or a water bottle, this is not a function. Because your two X values have two separate Y values, it is not a function. The reason this is not a function is negative two has two potential outcomes. Okay, here, this one and this X value of one have two potential outcomes, not a function. One has two potential outcomes. And you can even list those, five and negative two. You can list those Y value outcomes. Here you can also do the same. The two potential outcomes are three and four. Three and four. Okay. This is called a mapping diagram. This is a format that you have not seen before. And so let me explain how this works. In a mapping diagram, we're grouping our values of X and Y in two circles, similar to a Venn diagram, I suppose you can say. This is your X circle and your Y circle. And we only list each X value one time. No matter how many times it shows up on the graph, 
or on the table, you're only going to list the X value one time. Then we use arrows to connect these X values to corresponding Y values. Again, you're only going to list each Y value one time. So what we're going to do, this 5, if you put 5 into our equation, the expected result will be 3. If you plug 2 into that equation, your expected result is 4. If you plug negative 1 into the equation, your expected result is also 4. Now remember, multiple x values can have the exact same y value. We just cannot have multiple y values for any of our x's. So in this case, our quick check is to see and, double, and make sure that every single x value has one and only one arrow because that means that x value only corresponds with one other num with one value for y. So 5 has one arrow, 2 has one arrow, and negative 1 has one arrow. So 5 only corresponds with 3. 2 only corresponds with 4. Negative 1 only corresponds with 4. This is a function. And again, that quick check for us is to make sure that each x value has only one corresponding y value. Let's look at this second uh, mapping diagram. So again, we're only going to list each x value. No matter how many times they show up on the graph, we're only going to list it one time. So we have a 5, we have a 2, and we have a negative 1. Again, with our y values, we are going to only list them one time. No matter how many times they show up, we're only going to list them once. So we have a 3, a 4, and a 5. Here, if we plug 5 into our equation, we're going to get the result of 3. If we plug 2 into the equation, we're going to get the result of 4. The issue happens when we see that we could also end up with a value of 5. Because this value of 2 corresponds with a 4 and a 5, a Coke and a water bottle, when we enter 2 into the equation for x, we have two potential y values. Because we cannot predictably say which answer we're going to get, this is not a function. Because the x value of 2 has two potential outcomes. Okay? And those potential outcomes are 4 and 5. And then lastly, we have graphs. Graphs are the easiest when we're looking at a graph we're going to do what's called the vertical line test we are going to double check that if we were to draw vertical lines through these points each of those vertical lines would only touch one dot the reason we use vertical lines is because this is our x-axis, and this is the x value of 1, the x value of 2, the x value of 3, the x value of 4, the x value of 5, and the x value of 6. Similar on the other side, we have x value of negative 1, x value of negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and negative 6. So what we're doing with this vertical line test is we're seeing, okay, on this x value of negative 6, do we only have one point? If you have more than one point on any of the x 
axes, then that means that if you enter that x into the equation, you have two potential outcomes. So we take our ruler and we are going to draw lines through each of these points that show up on our graph. This line here only touches one point. This line here only touches one point. This line here touches just one point. This line here touches just one point. One point. One point. And one point. So because each of these points on the graph are the only points that fall on each of the vertical lines, this is a function. Now you have to test every point that you see on your graph. And if you're asked for a reason why this is a function, you can simply say that it passes the vertical line test. I think that's how you spell vertical. So if it passes the vertical line test, it is a function because each value of x has one value of y. Okay? So let's look at a second graph. Here's our second graph. Again, we have our x axis running right here. And we have all of these x values on our graph. We're going to test each of these x values on the graph to see if there is only one value of y that corresponds to the value of x. If there's only one point on each line, that's only one corresponding y value. So we're going to start from left to right. We're going to test our graph. This vertical line has only one point that falls on it. This vertical line has only one point. This vertical line has only one point. This vertical line, just one point. This vertical line has two points. And this vertical line has one point. Now, because one of our vertical lines has multiple points on it, this point here is the point 1, 2, 2. It's positive 2, positive 2. And this point here is 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is 2, 5. So the x value of 2 has multiple potential outcomes. This is not a function. Your reasoning for this is it fails the vertical line test. The x value of 2 has two potential outcomes. And those two potential outcomes are 5 and 2. So in this case, if you press the button for Coke, the number 2, you have the potential of getting a Coke or a bottle of milk, Coke, and a water bottle. You want to make sure that every single time you're getting a Coke. Because this would not work 
in a predictable manner in a, an equation, this is not a function. Okay, so on your graphs, you're gonna draw vertical lines through all of your points to make sure that each vertical line or each x value along the x axis has only one corresponding y value. In your mapping diagram, you're going to double check that each x value has only one arrow coming from them because if there's multiple arrows, it's telling you that it has more than one value of y that corresponds with each x. On your table, you're going to make sure that each of your x values don't repeat. And if you come across a point where they repeat, you're gonna double check your y values and see are they different. If they're different, it's not a function because your x values have more than one corresponding y value. And then again, when you're looking at your ordered pairs, you're going to again check to see if any of your x values repeat. And if any of your x values repeat, you're going to check to see the y value. If those two y values are different, your x value has more than one corresponding y value and it's not a function. Because to be a function, each value of x has one and only one corresponding y value. And think of it as a soda machine. If you press Coke, and you have the potential of getting water instead of Coke, or you have the potential of getting milk instead of Coke, it, the machine is broken. It does not function correctly. Here at the bottom is a question. They want you to say which one is not a function, which one does not show Y as a function of X. Basically that says which one is not a function.